Welcome back to Innovation. When last we were here, we were working with our ladybugs here. So that way we could play a little game to figure out which ladybug we should touch. Is it the correct one? And we find the correct one, we get a popping sound. And the ladybugs move around again. We have to try to guess which is the correct one. So that's all fine. But it's not a really hard game when there's only two ladybugs. So we want to add a little bit more difficulty. And one way we can do that is by changing the number of ladybugs that are created in this repeat loop. So if we create three ladybugs after we touch, we can see that there's three ladybugs added to our original. So that's four ladybugs. Found me. See how they move each time? Now the game is a lot harder to figure out which ladybug is the correct ladybug. So to make this a, a little bit more interesting, what I'd like to do is go in and make our ladybugs change color a little. So I'm going to use the fact that each ladybug has a different ID. Right here when I start as a clone, I'm going to change the color. I'm going to go to here, change color effect by. I'm going to go my operators and drag in an operator. That is a multiplication operator. And I'm going to get my variable and I'm going to multiply the ID, which is unique to each bug by the number, let's say 25, give that a try. And what that will do is it will change the color of each bug and get created. Start with two and see how they're different colors now. Found me. And now we have a whole bunch of different color bugs on the screen. We got to find the right one. Okay, so that's working pretty good. The next step is to make this so we can make it more difficult as we play the game. Because right now, having to go into the code to change this number to make the game easier or harder seems like a lot so we're going to create a slider that allows us to change the number of bugs that are created every time um, we create new bugs so let's create two new sprites first one we're going to paint it's going to be a circle we want to fill it in and i'm going to choose a dark color I don't want an outline. No outline. And I'm just going to draw a circle around that dot right there. I got my circle. And I'm going to name this slide, slider, ball, slider ball. That's what's going to move across the screen stop here and make our bugs go away. I'm also going to create a new sprite that I'm going to draw. I call it slider line. Draw a line across the screen. We've done this a couple times. I get as straight as possible. Now we have slider ball and slider line drawn across the screen. So now let's look at some code. I want my slider line to be in a particular location when the program starts. So I'm going to click on the code for slider line. And I'm going to create two variables. The first one, again, it's for all sprites, it's going to be slider location.
make a new variable called slider value. So slider location and slider value. So go to my events. When green flag clicked, I want to set the X value to zero. That way it is centered on our screen. And I want to set the Y value to our variable that we just created, slider location. Now the reason why I use the variables because I want to be able to pick and choose where that slider is on the screen. And I want to be able to use it for um, each of the different objects that make up the slider. So the line is part of it. The other part of it is the ball. So let's click on slider ball now and add some code. Let's start with a green flag event clicked. And I'm gonna set the slider value to two. I wanna start at a really low number, like two bugs. The other thing I have to do for my ball here is I don't want the user to be able to drag the ball all around the screen. So I have to do this thing where I set the drag mode to not draggable. Okay. Now time to set the X value of my slider ball. This is what's really gonna dictate how my ball moves back and forth across the screen. So I'm gonna go in and get motion, set my X value. I'm gonna do some operations here. I want a times block and I want a subtraction. I'm gonna put the times block inside the subtraction. I wanna subtract 235. Now the reason why I'm subtracting 235 is that the screen itself is about 470 pixels wide. But it counts using the Cartesian coordinate system starting at around negative 235 and going all the way over to positive 235. It's actually a little bit bigger than that, but we wanna include the size of our ball. So your number may not be exactly 235. We might have to play with that for your number. Let's all start with 235. So I'm gonna set the X value using this operation. And I'm going to start with the slider value put in that first circle. And I want to multiply by 20 because I don't want the slider value to necessarily count by 400 and some values. I want the slider value to count by a smaller number of increments. So that's why I'm multiplying by 20. Set the X value to that. And then I'm gonna do a forever loop in here because I always want the Y value to be in the same spot. And that's going to be wherever I choose for my slider to be. I'm gonna to go to motion, set my Y value, variables, and set my Y value to my slider location, which is wherever I choose for my slider haven't chosen a slider location yet. So I'm gonna go into my green flag clicked on my slider ball. I could probably do it on the slider line too, but we're gonna do it on the slider ball. And we're gonna set the slider location to, zero, to negative 150. That way a slider goes to down here on the bottom of the screen so the line will move and the ball will move let's see how that works flag click it more than once and now we can see that the slider slider ball are linked together by this slider location variable 
that's all for today. Next time, we'll see what happens when we move the slider. See you next time. Thank you.